Uh, I want to talk about the structure of a long bone, but before we do that, I need to define what I mean by a long bone. <clears throat> okay, so what makes a bone a long bone? Well, of course, this is a long bone because it's the longest bone in the body, which is the femur. Um, but it doesn't actually have to be very long to be a long bone because these are also long bones. These are the bones of your toes called the phalanges. Um, so what makes it a long bone? Um, it is that the bone is longer than it is wide, okay, and it's round in cross-section, roundish in cross-section, meaning that um, a bone like a rib that's flat in cross-section, even though it's pretty long, it's not actually a long bone. And also a bone that is strange like this is not a long bone either, okay? So, um, longer than it is wide and relatively flat, uh, relatively round and cross, cross section. Okay, so I want to, I want to uh, talk about this bone, right? Which is the same bone that's represented in the figure right here. So, hold on, let me like make this bigger. Come here. Okay, so, um, as far as the structure of a long bone goes, um, big picture understanding. There are ends, and then there is a middle. The ends are called epiphyses. Um, epiphysis. Um, epiphysis um, is singular, and epiphyses is plural. Epi means on or upon. That can help you remember what it is. And they are not superior and inferior epiphyses because, of course, this is associated with an appendage appendage, something long and skinny and skinny. So they are proximal and distal epiphyses. Proximal and distal relative to, of course, the point of attachment. So um, you'd have to know which one's the proximal and which one's the distal epiphyses. Uh, and sometimes it's really easy. Um, and sometimes it's not to know. So a lot of times you have to spend a little time getting to know the bone in order to know which one is proximal and which one's distal. Okay, so what are the proximal and distal epiphyses made of? What do they look like on the inside? So this one isn't cut open, but the figure you're seeing right here is um, the whole bone, regardless of which bone, a healthy bone is covered by compact bone on the outside. But then the epiphyses, if you can't see this fixture, figure really well in the video, make sure you've got it open in your textbook. Um, the epiphyses are compact bone on the outside and spongy bone in the middle. Um, and when spongy bone is all dried out, it leaves these open spaces. When the bone is alive, it's generally filled mostly with red bone marrow, a little yellow bone marrow as well. Um, in addition, the other thing about the epiphyses is something that um, all students kind of hate is that it's got a whole bunch of bumps and depressions on it. Almost every blasted one of them has a different name. And you will immediately start to wonder, why the heck do I need to know all of these? Well, I will go ahead and tell you that quite often a muscle that you are going to learn later will attach to that bump or depression. A nerve that you're going to learn later will run through that hole. So right now, you're just going to have to trust us that that is actually important. So it has lots of surface features and they're super annoying. I get it. Um, okay, and then there is a, a line that is really going to be important when we talk about growth. It's called the epiphyseal line. Um, can't see it super well in this figure, so I'm going to pull up another one for you. Do you see right here this line? Okay, what that is, um, it's not always really easy to find, but it's functionally really important. That is where the growth plate used to be. When it's open, and I'll talk about how bone grows a little bit later, when it's open, it's called the epiphyseal plate or growth plate, and it's got cartilage in it. And when it's closed, like when you're fully grown, um, then it seals, and you're not going to get any taller in height, and it's called the epiphyseal line. If you have a real bone, sometimes you see it as an interruption in the pattern of the spongy bone. Okay, so epiphysis, proximal, distal, diaphysis, 
diaphysis, dia means through. This is also called the shaft of the bone. Um, the shaft of a long bone is primarily made of compact bone. It has a little bit of spongy bone on the inner surfaces. Um, and then what it has inside, and you can't see inside this one, but you certainly can here and here, what you will find is a marrow cavity, which we call a medullary cavity. The medullary cavity contains, in an adult, usually yellow marrow, which is fat storage, and it makes this way lighter than if it were solid bone all the way through. The medullary cavity on the inside is lined with um, what we call end osteum. So let me introduce you to end osteum. Um, so that figure have a good picture of end osteum? Maybe it doesn't. Okay. Um, the, oh, it's just got it right here. So the end osteum is really um, a cellular layer that lines the medullary cavity, but it also lines all of these other little spaces in the bone. It lines pretty much all the spaces in the bone. Um, and what it has, the end osteum, is osteoclast, osteoblast, and osteoprogenitor cells, which means that you can do remodeling of bone from the inside out. And it's lining the entire medullary cavity and all of these spongy bone spaces. So keep that in mind for when we talk about osteoporosis a little bit later. So um, then on the outside of this bone, all bones, not just, uh, not just long bones, but all bones, what you have is a layer called periosteum, which I've already mentioned to you once, but I haven't told you the complete story of it. Periosteum... Um, is a tough sheath that's on the outside of the bone and it is where muscles would attach for instance they would weave into the periosteum and so it's got kind of two functions the outer layer is for yanking on because you pull your bones around all the time um, the inner layer is for um, remodeling so let's talk about the two layers. So this figure right here is showing you that there's an inner layer called the cellular layer, and then an outer layer called the fibrous layer. Um, the cellular layer is osteoblast, osteoclast, and osteoprogenitor cells, which means that you can remodel bone also from the outside, okay? It's gonna wrap around the whole outside of the bone. Um, then the outer layer right here is called the fibrous layer and it is made for yanking on it is um, dense irregular connective tissue it's really tough and it's how you anchor ligaments and tendons to the bone okay and then the other thing that's important with this bone and the periosteum is that um, there is usually one big what we call a nutrient artery going in to the bone somewhere along the midline, sometimes more than one. Um, but what it has to do is it has to make it all the way to the inside of the bone. And one of the things that it has to do is it has to run through the periosteum and then under the periosteum. So um, under the periosteum, there's lots of blood vessels and nerves. Um, they are going to eventually penetrate and nourish all the way to the end of the bone. And then at the very ends of your long bones is going to be cartilage. This cartilage is called articular cartilage. Um, that's not the type of tissue that's describing what it's doing. Articulation is a joint, so this is specifically the cartilage that forms most joints in your body, which is what kind of cartilage tissue. Do you guys remember what kind of cartilage tissue forms most bones in your body? It is hyaline cartilage. Most of those places, that's going to be hyaline cartilage. It's going to be really important that bone does not smash against bone because when that happens, bone tends to grow bone spurs and reduce mobility. So that is the structure of a long bone.